Thank you for taking some time out of your morning to join us for this Preterist Power Hour. Uh, this is a ministry provided to you through the Power of Preterism Network. Our goal is to aim for clarity, healing, and strategy in all that we do. Here for the Preterist Power Hour, we've marked out this time. Uh, usually we meet at 11 a.m. here on Zoom or call in or through Facebook Live, however you feel uh, you want to be a part of this conversation. Uh, I love these times uh, that we get to come together every day. Uh, to mark out an hour of power, to really see the uh, fruit and to gain an understanding of the, uh, the, the, um, the study that we're doing in regards to fulfillment and in regards to uh, what God is doing as it, he advances the truth of full preterism. Uh, so I'm excited for this. I'm Mike Miano. I'm pastor of the Blue Point Bible Church, director of the Power of Preterism Network, and it's my privilege to be here with you, to be joined by my co-host, who will interview, uh, in, introduce himself, not interview, thank God, right, uh, who will introduce himself here in a moment, and we will move along with our Testimony Tuesday Preterist Power Hour. Good morning, Edward. Good morning, Pastor. Uh, name, uh, yeah, oh, go do your thing, brother. Introduce yourself, please. No, continue. You had a thought that you wanted to... Uh... You know how that goes. I already forgot it, brother. So go okay. ahead. <laughs> yes. Okay. My name is Edward Howell. I'm a member of the Blue Point Bible Church, also a board member of the Power Preterism Network. And uh, it's a, always an honor and privilege to co-host with Pastor Michael Miano. And at this time, I'd like to lead us in prayer. Uh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this morning. Uh, please go before us. Give us clarity of mind, thought, and proper focus that was presented this morning will be empowering to those listeners, as well as myself, and that uh, it will provoke us to uh, conversation uh, on this matter. And each topic that we discuss, hopefully that, you know, uh, is causing you to people, the listeners to think about it, to discuss it with one another, develop fellowship. You know, this is a wonderful way to grow. Uh, and please give us your comments, questions, and things of this nature that we may continue in this effort in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. And you marked out some great points there. I do hope that this is edifying. Of course, we read in 1 Corinthians 14 that all things should be done uh, for the edification of the church. And I pray that that's what we're doing here. And uh, I know many that have testified to that. Uh, for example, as I was mentioning to you off the air, uh, two of our more recent uh, posts through social media, one being the interview with Lynn Hiles that we had Dr. Lynn Hiles last week. And uh, that interview that is just going live all over the place. People are sharing it, you know, commenting on it and clearly being edified in that regard. So I'm very grateful for that. And then yesterday I mentioned an article from Brother Glenn Hill. And uh, that article was, are we living, we are not living in the last days, something to that effect. And Glenn wrote a very simple, concise, true to form, because again, his book is very similar, uh, very simple, concise explanation as to why we're not living in the last days. And I'm glad to say that uh, people have shared it all over the internet. People have, you know, kind of take the picture and then share it on their own stuff. So uh, I'm excited to see that. And I praise God for Glenn Hill's ministry, Glenn Hill's heart, his mind, and of course, his words. So um, we're, we're having an effect, brother. There really is power in preterism. And I'm excited to, uh, to do this. So yesterday, I, I kind of did a review. This is our first week back at it since we took a week hiatus. And sometimes taking that week long break can kind of put everything up in the air. You know, you, you forget where you were, uh, what you wanted to do. As you know, Edward, I'm a note taker, so I don't yes. have that problem often. And, uh, you know, I'm able to look back and see things that we, uh, we wanted to do and we're aiming for. That being said, I did want to mention something uh, before I share my testimony Tuesday. I want to encourage you to do the same. Um, one of the things we, uh, we had been working on was gaining uh, access to Tim Martin's sermons that he had preached at Covenant Community Church uh, in Montana. And sure enough, I have the sermons now. So I have a flash drive. I'm going to go ahead and work up a site where we're going to upload those sermons, maybe do them weekly or something like that. There's another uh, you know, church that you can attend to get a sermon from, if you will. Uh, we're working on our website where we're going to provide links to different blogs. For example, Edward and I are going to talk today about some of the blogs that we've just published and how you can gain access to them. Our goal would be for powerofpreterism.com to become a hub where you can go to that website and find resources in regards to 
blogs from those of us that have blogs that we'd like to update regularly. Uh, you can go ahead and find all the teaching videos that we have. You can find resources that we mentioned, which you can currently do by visiting our blog site, powerofpreterism.wordpress.com. And then, of course, I'm working on an idea called Preterist Weekends, and the goal would be to have you uh, able to plug into a church, whether it's listening to a sermon, finding fellowship on Zoom, uh, whatever it might be, as you know, Edward, and as you regularly lift up, uh, we consider many of those who view our resources online as our online community, an extension of what we do here at the Blue Point Bible Church, if not an extension of the kingdom of God. So all of that and more coming uh, through the Power of Preterism Network. Uh, Tim Martin's sermons, sermons will be uploaded soon. Perfectly, you were able to go back and avail yourself the opportunity to watch the 2010 Covenant Creation Conference audios that I had uploaded a couple weeks ago. And again, we're going to return back to that conversation uh, of Genesis creation and, uh, and eschatology uh, in the near future. So I look forward to that. And... Um, yeah, so Testimony Tuesday, if you will. Uh, for me, Edward, this morning I woke up and I saw this post from Brother Axel Sapak. Uh, he goes by Apostle Axel Sapak on social media, and he shared this quote, the realm of heaven is inside of you, and it wants to affect the world around you. And I believe that's the ultimate conclusion of the hope of the Bible, that, you know, that Christ would be in us, what we read in Colossians 127, right? The hope of glory. And if Christ is in us, heaven is in us because he is the embodiment of heaven, if you will. And then the goal of that would be to affect the world around us. As we know, uh, or as you know, Edward, I regularly bring up Deuteronomy chapter four. Uh, Deuteronomy four tells us why God gave Israel the laws and statutes, essentially why he even started this, this covenant story that we praise him for. And in Deuteronomy 4, he explains that I gave you these laws and statutes so that the nations around you might see, to paraphrase, might see me through you, that you would live in a manner that would cause people to say, what sort of God is so close to his people, constantly providing wisdom, constantly being faithful? What sort of God provides his people with this type of wisdom and understanding in regards to himself and the world? And that's what we have. That's what we praise him for, that he's done that. And I believe that, you know, my testimony Tuesday is that, you know, he has indeed deposited the kingdom of God within his people. The realm of heaven is inside of you, and it wants to affect the world around you. What do you think, brother? What's your testimony this morning? Well, my testimony is I'm, I'm glad that I woke up this morning in good health and, and cognitively you know, sound, um, no issues uh, uh, mentally in, in that regard. Um, I just thank and praise God for, you know, for giving me a, a sound mind, you know, in these times. And also, uh, I like how you had mentioned that phrase from the individual of that uh, heaven is within us and, and things of this nature, because heaven being in us and Christ being in us, that means we're living in the kingdom, you know, according to Matthew 16, 28, through there says to you, there will be some of those standing here and not taste death until they see the son of man coming in, in his kingdom, which we believe he had come. So therefore we're in his kingdom. So we have heaven within us, Christ within us, and we're living within his kingdom. And by doing so, all those things that that's ha happening, uh, around us as far as the wars and famines and things that, that's going on, you know, we can demonstrate, you know, the life in the kingdom that will draw men unto God, that they may see that, you know, there's a consolation to all that's going on. You know, Amen. there's a hope, you know, so yes. Yeah, brother, that's, you're right on target. You know, I have to say, Glenn Hill, he, when he preached a sermon at the recent conference I mentioned yesterday, Rethinking the Resurrection, uh, one of the things he brought up in that sermon that I found so beneficial and so clear was, you remember when Jesus left, when he, well, when he talked about leaving, he prayed in John 17, and he says, I leave so that I may go and prepare a place for you. And then he goes on to say, I will receive you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. Now, a lot of people have conjured up some strange theories and notions about what that means. Again, most people seem to think that has something to do with uh, when we biologically die, the ethereal realm that we're going to go to 
uh, and obsess about that. Some people create, you know, there's been worship songs created out of it and so forth. However, what Glenn Hill highlighted is exactly what you just said. He said, Jesus left to prepare a place, what? The kingdom of God, so that he would come and bring us to be where he is in the kingdom of God. He came in the kingdom, as you rightly pointed out. And where, to, where was he? In the kingdom. What did he come to do? To make the kingdom with us on earth as it is in heaven, uh, so that we might be where he is as well. You know, uh, just this past Sunday, I, as I was preaching through 1 Thessalonians 4, again, another text that has been uh, oddly uh, confused, the goal of the meeting, the goal of the gathering is to be with the Lord forever, that you would have his presence in your life. It's so simple so that we would breathe together is something that I gleaned from Brother Lynn Hiles, uh, where he had mentioned that in his teaching on 1 Thessalonians 4, that that word air means breath, spirit, so that we would be united in the spirit together and that we would breathe together. We would have spiritual thoughts. You know, what does it say in 1 Corinthians 2? The spiritual man has spiritual thoughts, understands spiritual things. And that's what we hope that we're, we're manifesting. That, how about that for a testimony Tuesday? You know, if I may add one more verse uh, to this conversation in Luke chapter 17, and I appreciate Brother Bob Minner, who uh, posted this earlier today uh, in regards to that quote I shared with you. Uh, Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. Listen to the beautiful words of Jesus. As he prays, I'm sorry, I'm in John 17. I, I meant to go to Luke 17, but John 17, if you don't mind, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to bounce back over to Luke 17. I do not ask in behalf of these alone, but I ask for those who believe in me through their word. Remember again, it wants to affect the world around you. So Jesus gives his church the deposit of the kingdom to the effect that his church will affect the world around them, uh, that the, those who believe in me through their word might come to understand. And then notice what he says, that they may all be one. And even as thou, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Again, hopefully we see the beauty, the testimony that comes from fulfilled eschatology. What Christ was coming to do was to make his the deposit of his presence of the kingdom of heaven, if you will, within the believers. One last text I'll bring up, again, mentioning Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. Now, having been questioned by the Pharisees as to when the kingdom of God was coming, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is, for behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. And again, we know he was speaking about himself, uh, that he is the kingdom of God, and that if, the, if Christ is in us, the hope of glory, the realm of heaven is inside of you, and it wants to affect the world around you. So, uh, you know, I... I I lead with that because I have some points I'm going to make. Uh, I mentioned before that we published uh, blogs, both Edward and I, uh, last night that we're going to bring up and maybe review here in a moment. And in my blog, I lead in on this conversation of, uh, obviously, uh, yesterday we talked a little bit about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., being that it was the anniversary of his uh, assassination. And uh, there was quite a few programs that I have been a part of this past weekend uh, to, to glean insight from the wisdom, the prophetic wisdom, if you will, uh, from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, last night they talked about injustice. They talked about the problems of nationalism, militarism, and racism. And uh, they did a program called the Beloved Community Conversation. And uh, I wrote a blog about that and some of the things that I've been gleaning over the past weekend. But my point would be that when we look at a world ravaged by war, just before we came live, we were talking about the news and uh, we see, unfortunately, in our media, uh, a world ravaged by war, if not right in front of us, and in many different ways. Uh, right now, obviously, the popular topic is Russia and Ukraine, but there's war everywhere. It's, it's the way of the world, as I wrote in my blog. And if we, the people of God, are called to be what Brother Glenn Hill said, the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy, then it compels us to spread that to the world around us. It, you know, that's our job. That's what this is all about. You know, we talk about the power of preterism. The power of preterism is how we lean in on the issues of this world and cause those issues to be influenced by the presence of God. Amen. And that's, you know, hopefully that is a testimony this morning for each of us that we would find our way 
in doing that. You know, you you mentioned Edward that uh, you know you woke up this morning, you're of sound mind. Well, if you don't have that, you can't do anything else. You know, so that's very foundational, and that shows where God has been faithful to you, so that you might use your day that you woke up into, and that you might use the the sound mind that you've been given. A verse I meditated on this morning, First Timothy one five. The goal of our faith is this: love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. So, you know, I thank you, Edward, and I, I imagine I went on a, a brief exhortation, if you will, at this point uh, with this. But again, it, it's so important that we would see the fruit of what we have with fulfilled eschatology, with preterism, and we would walk worthy of it. And I see the importance of, you know, Old Testament, you know, being revealed in the New Testament and the hope of Israel, like, like you had mentioned, was to dwell with God forever. You know, sure. God, you know, uh, ta God tabernacling with us forever. Uh, my point being is that Israel, they, 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 their hope was not in the by and by, you know, after death. Their, 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 their uh, hope was life, living at the moment, you know, and, and, and just having God, you know, uh, uh, communing with them. You know, that was their desire. And we should take that into consideration and do that within our lives because they're giving us the example of the purpose, mm -hmm. you know? So, yes. That's right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we need to breathe on some folks. You know, that's what I'm going to say. We need to start breathing on some folks. Now, again, I know that's a strange thing to say in our society right now, right? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> we understand <laughs> uh, the spiritual mentality of that. Not, you know, please, if you need to wear a mask, don't breathe on folks. You'll freak some people out. But in a spiritual way, we do need to be breathing the breath of God, the spirit of God, and, and living those things out, letting people see the fruits of the spirit. You know, Edward, if you don't mind, I'm going to lead in on the blog that I wrote, and then I'm going to kind of jump over to yours, because I think we both shared things that are very edifying. Now, uh, I published a blog this morning on my personal blog site, nianogonewild.wordpress.com. We use WordPress around here, if you haven't noticed. Uh, I think every blog we use, uh, obviously, I organize a lot of them, and I use WordPress as a foundation. Our church website, for that matter, is a WordPress site. So um, I want to encourage people to make use of it. And uh, so today I posted a Testimony Tuesday blog. I entitled it, Mentors, the Message, and Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, what I basically did in my blog was I boasted about meeting Shane Claiborne, again, a, a, an idol of mine. I even joke about it in the uh, the blog, but really what I'm saying is he's a teacher that a mentor that has really blessed my life. I found a blog I wrote earlier uh, back in 2009 uh, this morning, and I shared it on that blog site. So you could go and read that blog and learn a little bit more about the initial influence that Shane Claiborne had in my life uh, as I was studying back in 2009 and then coming to understand quite a few different th details of theology. Uh, most notably in 2010 was when I kind of embraced preterism. So you would imagine in 2009, I was studying through a lot of stuff. And uh, Shane really put flesh on Christianity for me. He helped me understand before I, I heard it from the preterist lens. Again, I always boast that Alan Bondar taught me what the kingdom of God was. It was that verse, Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy uh, in the Holy Spirit that blessed my life. However, prior to that, learning that, it was Shane Claiborne who you know, just live the reality of what I see kingdom life to be. Uh, some of you might know that I went to, uh, I, I was a, a short-term delegate for the Christian peacemaker teams where I went over to Israel, Palestine and served there for quite a few weeks uh, in helping um, Palestinians, you know, be liberated and work toward their liberation. And uh, so I did that because of Shane Claiborne. Shane Claiborne was the one that familiarized me with Christian peacemaker teams with whom he served as well. Then I also traveled dressed like a monk, catch this, you want to laugh this morning, uh, dressed like a monk, I traveled to um, Reba Place Fellowship in Evanston, Illinois, and I went there to participate in what they called the uh, New Monastic Conference, and we learned about uh, common prayer and many of the things that influence my life to this day. Uh, so uh, we learned about, you know, scavenging food and, and working to the benefit of our community. Edward, you know, I cook plates for our community. And uh, some of those things were uh, very much implemented by the generosity that I was able to see at Reba Place Fellowship. So if I might even boast in the fact that when I have my family, when, you know, uh, getting married later this year, and when I have my family in my home, uh, my goal is to use some of the details that I learned there 
at Reba Place Fellowship. So uh, again, a lot to learn from Shane Claiborne. He wrote the books, uh, two books that I found very uh, instrumental in my faith was uh, the, the two books were uh, The Irresistible Revolution and also Jesus for President, uh, two very, uh, uh, you know, books I would encourage people to get their hands on. I'm not saying I agree with anything and everything he preaches, or well, I do agree with some things, but I don't agree with everything uh, he teaches and preaches, uh, but I do find him to be a great resource uh, for the effectivity of the kingdom of God, God being seen in and through us. So uh, that being said, uh, what the reason why I've been talking about him is, as I mentioned, uh, I went to a couple events. I went to uh, the 55th uh, year anniversary of the Beyond Vietnam pre uh, sermon or um, speech that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had given uh, this past weekend, 55 years ago in New York City. And I, we went and we did a, uh, well, I, I listened to a rereading of that speech uh, by different speakers and, and different people. And uh, a very foundational speech, uh, you know, something I, I would say it's prophetic. When you read through it, there's things that Martin Luther King Jr. says uh, that truly should concern us uh, regarding things we see in the world today, things we see in the church today. And uh, for example, one quote that I shared was, uh, he talked about Vietnam and he said, there's a far deeper malady within the American spirit. And if we ignore this sobering reality, and if we ignore this sobering reality, we will find ourselves organizing clergy and laymen concerned committees for the next generation. We will be marching for these and a dozen other names and attending rallies without end, unless there is a significant and profound change in American life and policy. And unfortunately, we know that we see those rallies. We see those concerned committees. I sit on some of these committees where, you know, all we can do is just muster up concern and wonder what do we do? And you listen to the Martin Luther's uh, sermon there and you end up seeing uh, Martin Luther King's uh, sermon, you end up realizing he had some prophetic words for us. Uh, and I've shared all of them in my blog, not all of them, but I shared some that stood out to me in that blog. I want to encourage you to go ahead and go over to my site and visit it. And I basically created a foundation for what I think we need to be highlighting that, again, if we're going to hold true to that quote I just shared to you, the Testimony Tuesday, we need to ask ourselves in, in regards to preterism, how are we affecting the world around us? How are we helping people see the presence of God through us? And I leaned in on two messages I recently have been uh, kind of meditating on. One I'm still reviewing by Pastor Jonathan Buttrey uh, in regards to embodying resurrection. He preached that this past Sunday at the Holston PBU Church. And then also Glenn Hill, where he preached about you know, that, that text I mentioned, Romans 14, 17, uh, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So I say all of that because my goal for my blog was not just to lift up a testimony for learning all these things, but rather an exhortation to us to see where the power of what we understand to be fulfilled eschatology, the kingdom of God fulfilled within and with us. Uh, how are we leaning in on these conversations about war? How are we leaning in on conversations about nationalism, militarism, and racism? Because it's our job to affect those conversations. It's so, wonderful that you just mentioned that because <clears throat> when I listened to the brief part of Martin Luther King talking about the Vietnam War, his foundation was he first a pastor of a church. Right. So he, he, had, he had given that, you know, that foundation, of, and we need to give that foundation that we're in the kingdom of God That's you right. know, as a foundation when we, you know, uh, give conversation about, you know, the current events. That's right. Amen. We need to, we need to help people see, you know, as Glenn Hill uh, rightly preached last uh, two Sundays ago, he said, we need to help people see what righteousness is. We need to help them see what peace is. We need to help them see what joy is. If, if we're not embodying it and bringing it about, then there's no hope because that's where it's going to, it's going to come from Christ church. So matter of fact, this month, uh, the mark of new monasticism, if you will, uh, for the month of April is um, submission to Christ's body, the church, you know, because again, that's going to be the very foundational source. Contrary to, uh, I mentioned the Steve Whitsett debate uh, with Steve Bazden yesterday, uh, contrary to what Steve Whitsett said during the debate, which I was baffled by, uh, he said that the church does not embody the power of God, the resurrection of God, the resurrection power of God. It's not supposed to be found within the church. If I may actually just read to you a text, I was baffled when I heard that. Uh, in Ephesians chapter one, I want to just read to you what the text says and let you determine that 
based on the, what you read in a text. If you want to go over uh, to verse 18, and let's say we're going to lift this prayer up uh, for Steve Bazden, because it was a prayer on behalf of the, I'm sorry, uh, not Steve Bazden, Steve Whitsett. Steve Bazden seems to at least understand this portion of, uh, you know, the fulfilled reality of what we have. Now, I might have disagreements with him on how you obtain it and et cetera, uh, but, you know, Steve Bazden, in my estimation, ref- has a good understanding, whereas Steve Whitsett needs to uh, kind of reevaluate his uh, understanding of what is the gospel is. For example, let's read the Apostle Paul here writing to the church at uh, Ephesus, starting in verse 18, chapter one, verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his glory, uh, riches of the the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? These are in accordance with the working and the strength of his might. Now notice this, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So I'm I'm sorry for Steve Whitsett that he doesn't seem to have what Paul's praying for here. The uh, eyes of his heart being enlightened, that he would know what the hope of the calling is and the riches of the glory that has been given to the church so that the church might be the very demonstration of Jesus Christ. So, you know, I, I again, I encourage people go back. I'm going to make that debate available. As many of you know, we're going to have Steve ba- based in on the program on Thursday morning uh, to talk a little bit about the debate and, uh, you know, to talk about maybe in his eyes what some healthy uh, principles moving forward might be for vetting debate opponents. And also, I'll be sharing some thoughts. And Edward, hopefully, you'll be leaning in on that conversation as well. Yes. So, Go over and visit mianogonewild.wordpress.com. Check out my blog that I wrote today. I provided some resources for you. Uh, We talked about the reading of Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech, Beyond Vietnam. You can find a link to that. We also, I mentioned the the podcast from last night that I listened to with uh, Shane Claiborne, Cornell West, uh, among others. Um, You can find that link at my blog. And then also I mentioned in 2009, the blog I wrote talking about Shane Claiborne, you could go ahead and... uh, visit that at that blog as well. That being said, Edward, I know you wrote a blog and I want to uh, give you a moment. I know you have to kind of skate here in a little bit. So I wanted to give you a moment to share with us a little bit about, I know you mentioned it yesterday, uh, but refresh our mind. You have a blog here titled Feast of Weeks, Pentecost and Shavuot. Again, three words that are highlighting this feast. Uh, What were some of the things that stood out to you as you studied through this and prepared this blog? Well, I, I feel that, you know, the, the seven weeks of Shabbat was, you know, uh, uh, the Pentecost and Shabbat. I just thought that the information and the uh, commentary on that, you know, which is listed in the blog, is very important, you know, when you uh, put this with the uh, seven... Uh, the Lord's seven feast days, you know, it's good to know these things because, you know, once you understand that these things are fulfilled, you know, you know that we're living, you know, like you rightly mentioned earlier, heaven within us, Christ within us, we're living in the kingdom, you know, the new heavens, the new earth, you know, and uh, the, the new covenant that has no end. Uh, so it's just something I, I feel that would be uh, very beneficial and educational for those that, you know, would like to, you know, see the fulfilled uh, life in which we're living. Amen. You know, and uh, Edward, of course, you were a part of the conversation we did, uh, what, about a year ago now, maybe more, uh, where we talked through the Feast of the Lord. We did a whole series, of course, building on thoughts from other, you know, giants in the faith, such as, uh, let's say, Dave Curtis with his series on the Feast of the Lord, uh, Don Preston on some of the things he's taught about the feasts. And uh, we were able to really glean some great insight 
from uh, those teachers. And I'm excited that, you, you know, when I first tuned into Holston PBU Church, there was a brother named Mike Cornett, who I had the privilege to meet uh, recently, and he preached on the Feast of the Lord. And I was very much encouraged by that. I've actually shared that link, uh, and I'm going to share your blog on our ongoing resource in regards to the Feast of the Lord. So uh, we have a resource. If you want to know about the Feast of the Lord, we have a resource of all resources uh, where, you know, we've published everything on there and anything that we keep getting, we're going to add to it. So that way, you know, as you know, Edward, and I think that was our first uh, program that we actually did together was we went our series we went through was the Feast of the Lord because, Amen. right. Yeah. Because we said it was foundational, you know, it's foundational to a good understanding of what the scriptures are teaching. It's God's way if you will, uh, in teaching his people his plan. Yes, because you had uh, listed, you know, those resources in my blog, you know, if they were to scroll down mm -hmm. from the uh, Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, Shabbat, and they scroll down, they'll see that they can click on that link there and, and uh, see all of those resources right. you know, that you have provided, you know, that we've discussed in the Giants and everyone, you know, so you know, it's just wonderful, you know. Yeah, amen. You know, and brother, I, I, if I may, I know you have to get going, but I did want to mention, uh, go visit Edward's blog. It's Thinking Through Theology, edhowell.wordpress.com. Again, I'm going to be sharing it on our Facebook page, so you'll be able to find the link right there on our uh, the, the Power of Preterism Network's Facebook page. However, one thing I really appreciated that you did, Edward, I, I learned stuff uh, typing through it, and there's going to be one edit that I'm going to do. I'm noticing it now as I'm looking at it here on the screen. Mm -hmm. What you had highlighted was that the three there are three separate names used by the Hebrew scriptures for the Feast of Shavuot, uh, which in Hebrew means weeks. And hopefully we all know this is what most people call Pentecost. And each one of the different names, we know it's important to pay attention to names in scripture. And each one of the names offers a different facet, as you write here, a different facet of its observance. And you marked out three particular names, which was Hag Hashavu, Yam Habakurum, Habakurum, and Hag Hakatzer. And each one of those offered up a different explanation or detail regarding this feast. So uh, I thought that was a good morsel of truth there, if not the whole thing. Uh, there was a third day reference, which I also found interesting. Uh, the Lord visited his people three days after uh, the Mount Sinai uh, story there, uh, which again has a lot to do with Shavuot. So um, visit Edward's blog and uh, you'll, you'll be blessed. I'm going to make some edits that I'm noticing as I'm reading through it. Uh, Edward, anything you want to uh, you want to say as I uh, know you have to get ready to go? No, just it's, it's just been such a wonderful experience uh, and and being empowered by this hour, you know, daily, you know, it's just a wonderful thing. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here, brother. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to unmute some mics to see if anybody has anything they want to say uh, to you or uh, as you leave and uh, they want to converse. So uh, if you see your mic unmuted, uh, please jump in on the conversation. I'm grateful that each of you are here, of course. And uh, Edward, uh, please, uh, as we're talking, take your leave as you need to, when you need to. I've unmuted. We're going to see if anybody jumps in. If nobody has anything to say, we might just end the program a bit early today, uh, being that we've offered up quite a few different details. Uh, if we end early, it'll give you time to run over there and read the blogs that we've mentioned. And, yes. uh, and then, of course, tomorrow, the goal is going to be to uh, possibly reach out to some of those conference attendees the, uh, and the speakers there at the Rethinking the Resurrection and have some of them join with us. And then, of course, Jonathan Buttrey will be joining with us on Friday. Well, I thank all of you for being here this morning. I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and conclude us in a word of prayer. Uh, visit the Power of Preterism Network on Facebook. Like the page. Uh, there you'll be able to gain access to anything and everything we share. Uh, also, of course, visit powerofpreterism.com. I'm updating the website where it will become much more user-friendly, and you'll be able to navigate and find the resources that we've been mentioning for weeks. So uh, again, thank you for being here this morning. Let's go ahead and just praise our God and pray uh, that we would walk worthy of the things that we learned this morning. Mighty God, we do thank you for the testimony that you've put in front of us, Lord. We overcome by the word, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. We thank you, Lord, that you've 
given everything to us pertaining to life and godliness, that you truly have made the deposit of your kingdom within your people, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Lord, uh, as I started out today talking about that testimony uh, in regards to the kingdom of heaven being within us and being manifest through us, I pray that each of us endeavor to walk worthy. We endeavor to walk worthy of how we ought to live, which we see that wisdom there in the book of Thessalonians. Uh, Lord, that we would walk worthy of uh, making known the approved message and the approved men and women of God that make it known, that we would walk worthy, Lord, of thinking through our theology, a great title for a great blog, thinking of Brother Edward. And of course, Lord, we ask that you be with us, uh, be with Brother Edward uh, as he goes on with his day and allow us to have that moment where we help other people see your righteousness, your peace, and your joy. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace and we'll be back here tomorrow at 11 a.m. God bless.